All right, so welcome to the Mariner Biology YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully this will be the first of many of these types of videos that you can use to reinforce what you learned in class, uh, that you can check out if you are absent, and um, I'm sure you'll find other uses for them too, but uh, what they are for is to help support your learning outside of the classroom. In addition to your textbook, in addition to the online activities, and in addition to reading over any other assignments we give you at home, uh, this will hopefully start to clear up some of the concepts that are leaving you a little bit confused. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so what we talked about, or what we are talking about right now, is enzymes. And enzymes are a kind of protein that are really handy in helping chemical reactions happen in living things at uh, a little bit easier than they would without the enzymes. So, the first thing we know is that enzymes are proteins. And at this point you should know what proteins are made of. Okay. All right. So we know some things about enzymes. They're specific, and that means that each enzyme is only able to work on one kind of molecule. Okay, and we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves there, but uh, we know that they're specific. They only act on one or a few kinds of molecules, and we'll talk about what they do to those molecules in a little bit. All right, we know that enzymes are molecules that are found in living things that don't get used up. Whatever reaction they're involved in, they just help it along, but they're not changed in the process. They stay as they are, and then they once they've caused a reaction to happen, they can go back and, and help another reaction along. Okay, so we refer to uh, enzymes as things called catalysts. And a catalyst is anything that helps a reaction happen easier. Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit later about how they actually cause a reaction to happen easier. All right, so let's continue here. So what we've started to do down below is draw an enzyme. And the real specific part of the enzyme is this thing called the active site. And that's where the, the molecule that the enzyme is going to work on is going to fit in. Okay, and what happens is that active site is actually the thing that lowers the amount of energy that's needed to help the reaction start. And that's what we call the activation energy. That's what you see there. Okay, and again, it's, it's used to um, lower the energy needed to start that reaction. Okay, so we refer to these enzymes as organic because they're carbon-based, they're proteins, and we know that proteins are organic, okay? And we know that they lower the energy needed to start that reaction, okay? And that is how they help reactions happen faster. So that means that reactions can happen at a lower temperature because of what's going on with the enzyme, okay? So let's go to our next slide. So we redraw the enzyme. I'm drawing it a little more specific this time. You can see that the shape of the active site uh, is just a little more defined than it was in the other one. And here comes this molecule that the enzyme acts on. It's called the substrate. Okay, and you can see that the substrate fits very nicely in the active site. And as an example, we're going to say that uh, the substrate is sucrose. Okay, and what's happening is the substrate goes into the active site and then the active site kind of clamps down on it and we call that an induced fit and what happens is when the active site clamps down on it the bonds that are holding that substrate in this case it's sucrose the bonds are actually going to bend a little bit and the bonds are going to stress in that molecule and when they bend we know what happens when they bend right when they bend they're going to want to break and so there's all this crazy stuff going on around the perimeter of the active site. 
that helps those bonds in that substrate molecule bend so that they can break. Okay, and when they break, the enzyme has done, done its job. And the substrate now has been broken down into two different molecules. Okay, so if it's sucrose, we know that sucrose is something called a disaccharide. We learned about that earlier. Okay, and sucrose is broken down into glucose and another monosaccharide called fructose. Okay, so what we've done is we've seen the enzyme take the substrate, sucrose, and it has metabolized or broken down the sucrose into glucose and fructose. Okay, this is something, this is a kind of reaction that we've been talking about in class that takes larger molecules and breaks them down into smaller ones. Okay, and that's called, there's a couple names for that. Uh, hydrolysis is one thing you've heard. Uh, decomposition reaction is another thing you've heard. Okay, those two things are taking a bigger substrate molecule and breaking it into two smaller products. Alrighty. Okay, so let's draw this enzyme again. And we're going to draw on the active site again, label that. And what we're going to talk about here again we understand that lower that enzymes lower the activation energy that means they lessen the amount of energy that's required to help an, a reaction begin okay and when they lower this energy making it easier for the reaction to happen that's going to increase the rate at which the reaction happens okay so, so here's an example. Okay, if you put that sucrose that we were talking about in a beaker in some water, you could stare at it all day long at room temperature and it's not going to break down into fructose and glucose. Okay, if you start to heat up that beaker, then you'll start to break and you heat it up quite a bit you'll start to break the bonds between the fructose and the suc and the I'm sorry the fructose and the glucose in the sucrose and you'll break those bonds and you'll get uh, that disaccharide breaking apart into into its monosaccharides the fructose and the glucose okay what enzymes do is they make it so that reaction can happen at a lower temperature okay so if we're in your small intestine and you've got enzymes down there that are going to do this, then we can leave your body temperature at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. But if we don't have those enzymes, then we have to increase the temperature of your body to make these reactions happen. And we can't do that. It's not good for you. So it's really, really important that we have these enzymes because... They make our reaction, we have thousands of reactions that we need to happen in our bodies and they will not happen with, without the help of these enzymes. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now are what kinds of things can affect how well enzymes work. So let's check it out. Okay, so that's our big question now. So we want to know what kinds of things in the environment where these enzymes are can keep the enzyme from doing its job. Okay, and so we'll go to the next slide. And here we are, same deal, same enzyme, same active site. Okay, now if we heat up the temperature too much, right, these enzymes that are inside your body, they like to work at 98.6 degrees. So if the temperature goes up too much, then what's going to happen is the amino acids that make up the protein, right? Remember, enzymes are proteins. Those amino acids are going to lose the ability to hold on to each other. And so the, the enzyme is going to lose its shape. And once it loses its shape, it loses the ability to uh, help reactions happen because the, the shape of its active site changes, okay? Something else is uh, is pH, right? How acidic or basic a solution is. If 
the pH, I'm sorry, if the enzyme is used to a neutral pH or a slightly basic pH and all of a sudden the environment becomes acidic, it can do the same thing that temperature did. It'll denature that enzyme. It'll change its shape. And if you think about it, that makes sense, right? We can, just like we can cook with temperature and break down proteins, we can also, it turns out we can also cook with acids. And uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. Like, for instance, if, uh, if you like ceviche, you're cooking with lemon juice and lime juice, right? Those are acids. When we're canning stuff or pickling things, typically we use vinegar. That's an acid. And that starts to break down the proteins in there. And it can actually be used to cook foods. Okay, another thing that can uh, decrease the ability of an enzyme to do what it needs to do is if there's molecules that are similar to the substrate molecules, but they're different enough that they can fit in the active site, but the enzyme can't metabolize them. It can't break them down. Okay, and then it also the enzyme will work better if there's more of the substrate around, right? The more substrate there is, you can think of, um, for competitive inhibitors, right? You can think of the toothpicks that we used in the pretzel ace lab. And the same for substrate concentration, right? The, for a while, the rate of the reaction kept increasing, kept breaking more and more pretzels because there was just more pretzels available, okay? After a while, you saw what happened in the graph, and we'll, we'll talk about graphing in another uh, video, okay? But there's, there's all these different things. And we saw the effects of temperature in the lab we did with, uh, with the, um, where we compared the catalyst and the enzyme from the liver cells of a chicken, okay? Uh, when we heated up the enzyme, it stopped working. When we put the enzyme at a very low pH, when we put it in the vinegar, it stopped working right because the ch the shape changed you saw this you saw that there was no bubbles in those tubes okay this is this is what we did in class you made your observations and so what you need to do is connect what you're seeing in class to what I'm talking about right now okay so anyway that's that's about what I have for uh, this first video I uh, hope you like it and I, I I saw that I made a few errors here and there. This is my first time doing this, so so give me a break. And um and hopefully this is useful to you and and we'll have more to come. All right, take care.